Hi everybody, I'm Laurie, VP of Developer Relations at Llama Index. Welcome to our YouTube channel and today we're going to be showing you how to use our workflows feature. Uh, the way I'm going to be showing you that today is by building a multi-strategy workflow with reflection. Uh, so let's dive right in. This is a diagram of uh, how our workflow with reflection works. Uh, we start with the start event, uh, which goes to a judge, which judges how good the query is. If the query is bad, a bad query event is emitted, which goes to a function called improve query, which tries to generate a better query for it, uh, which generates a judge event, which sends you back to judging the query. You can loop through that as many times as necessary. This is the reflection part. Once the judge has decided that the query is sufficiently good, uh, it generates three simultaneous events, a re-rank event, a high top K event, and a naive rag event. These go to corresponding functions, each of which uh, attempts to query a rag index using a different strategy, either a naive rag strategy, a rag strategy with a high top K that is lots of context, uh, or re-ranking. Uh, which means that after it gets the context, it re-ranks the context according to how relevant it is. All three of those are going to generate a response event, and then that's going to go to a judge function. As we'll see, this judge function waits until it has received all three of these response events uh, before it emits the final answer, where it decides uh, which of these three strategies came up with the best answer. Once it does that, it sends a stop event and it emits the answer. So with that context of uh, how this flow works, let's dive right in and uh, see how that is put together. Uh, first, we install our dependencies. Uh, we need Llama index core, obviously. Um, we also need OpenAI to do the indexing. Um, Utils workflow is needed to generate this diagram that we just saw. Um, readers file is necessary to pull in the PDFs that we're going to be indexing. Uh, and uh, OpenAI embeddings are part of uh, reading in the files as well. Our data, which we're pulling in here, is three uh, very long PDFs about the budget of San Francisco in 2016, 2017, and 2018. Uh, at the top of our notebook, we bring in all of the dependencies that we just talked about as imports, and we set up our OpenAI key so that it can index this content. So the way that workflows work are they are classes that generate events. The whole workflow is event-driven. So the first thing that we do is we define classes that define all of our events. So uh, you saw in the diagram earlier, uh, there was a judge event, there was a bad query event, there's a naive rag event, high top K, re-ranking, res uh, a response event, and finally a summarize event. So now let's look at what the workflow itself looks like. Workflows are usually uh, implemented as classes which descend from the workflow class. In this case, uh, we have just an ordinary function to start off the class. This is loading or creating our index. This is standard rag stuff. It is uh, pulling in a bunch of PDFs from our data directory. It's putting them into a vector store, and then it's persisting that vector store to disk. Uh, if, that has, if that step's already been completed, then it uh, reads the vector store straight off of disk. Now let's go to our first actual step. You can tell that this is a step in the workflow because it's got a decorator called step uh, to which we are passing pass context equals true uh, so that we have a context object that we can pass between our various steps so that they can share state. Um, we initialize this if it's the first time it's running uh, by setting up our LLM, which in this case is OpenAI. Uh, we call that load or create index function that we just saw. Uh, and we set up uh, our uh, LLM as a judge, which in this case is just a simple chat engine. The reason it's a simple chat engine is because 
we want to remember between steps what has been said so that uh, it has more context about uh, the decisions that it's making. So the very first thing that we do is we give it a prompt that says, given a user query, determine if this is likely to yield good or bad results from a RAG system as is. If it's a good query, uh, then it returns good. And if it's a bad query, it returns bad. Uh, good queries use lots of relevant keywords and are detailed. Bad queries are vague or ambiguous. So then we give it the query. And if the LLM says it's bad, we generate a bad query event, uh, which we're gonna see in a second. Uh, if the query is good, then we generate three events in a row, uh, a naive rag event, a high top K event, and a re-rank event. Uh, the reason that you know that this step is the starting event is because it accepts a start event. That's the definition of the starting event. Um, as you'll see, this also accepts a judge event. Let's see how that gets pulled in. Um, the second step that's defined is improve query. This is the one that accepts the bad query event that we just, uh, that we just generated in the previous step. Um, it takes the query uh, and it tries to improve the query by prompting the LLM to take the query and improve it. Then it returns that improved query as a judge event. And like we saw earlier, the judge event it's one of the other things that is accepted by uh, the judge query parameter uh, step. So this is that loop that we were talking about. Uh, once it's looped enough to produce a good query, which is usually pretty quick, um, it will generate all three of those events. So now let's look at that. Um, in naive rag, we're just going to ask the query engine uh, with similarity top K of five um, with high top K, we're gonna do exactly the same thing, uh, except with a similarity top K of 20. Um, and in re-ranking, we do a little bit more. Uh, we pull in a re-ranker, uh, rank GPT re-rank, uh, and we say from the top 20 that you're retrieving, uh, pick the five most relevant. Uh, we do that by creating a retriever, which retrieves the top 20, and then creating a retriever query engine, which takes our retriever and uses our node post processor as the re, uh, our re-ranker as the node post processor. Each one of these does the same thing at the end, which is they return a response event. That response event contains a query. It says what source it came from, uh, and it includes the response that we got. Now we go to the judge event. The judge event accepts response events. Uh, and then this next line is interesting. It says uh, collect events. And what it's told to collect is a response events times three. So it's expecting three response events to happen. Um, the way collect events works is if the conditions have not yet been met, then it returns none. So the first two times this will run, it will, the first two times this, this gets fired, judge gets fired, nothing happens. Uh, it just returns none because it hasn't received three response events yet. Uh, once it receives a third response event, it continues to the next line. This is where we pass all three responses to the LLM and say, pick which one was the best one um, by number. Once we've got that, we return that one uh, and emit a stop event, which ends the workflow. So uh, this is how we drew that diagram. It's built into that utils package that we imported at the top. You just pass it the class and it will draw all possible flows uh, to an HTML file that you can then open with a draggable uh, SVG diagram, which is really cool. Um, and now let's see what it looks like when it runs. So the way you run a workflow is you instantiate the workflow. You can set a timeout. You can tell it whether to be verbose, which we are going to do this time because we want to tell it, we want it to tell us what steps are running. Uh, and then we call run. In this case, uh, the query that we're calling was, is how has spending on healthcare changed in San Francisco? So uh, it runs the judge query, it loads the existing index, that's the initialization step, uh, and then it produces no event. Uh, what that means is uh, it didn't return anything. What it did do, however, is it's, it didn't, even though it didn't call return, it did send three events. So uh, you now see that happening. It runs this naive rag step, it runs the re-rank step uh, and it runs the high top case step and it gets responses uh, from all three. 
uh, all three of those trigger because they produced a response event. Um, all three of them produce a response event which triggers the judge function. Uh, so you'll see it runs step judge, but judge didn't do anything. That's the first time. Run step judge again, but it still didn't do anything. Third time, it's got through response events, which is the what we told collect events to wait for. So then uh, it asks the LLM to judge, uh, and the answer that it gets is high top K. Uh, so um, that's interesting as a side note, re-ranking is supposed to be better uh, than just naive rag, but if you give it a lot of context, it tends to come up with a better answer. Uh, so, uh, and high top K is often gonna be faster than doing a re-rank step. So sometimes uh, you can get away without doing re-ranking. Um, or sometimes you just need to use a better re-ranker. Um, but it emits our final stop event and we re return our response and that's it. You've seen a workflow from beginning to end with all of the features of a workflow. Hope you enjoyed this and that this helped and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.